In this video, we're going to have a look at squares, cubes, square roots, and cube roots in algebraic expressions. Example 1. Simplify. In A, we have a square, and in B, we have a cube. Remember that these exponents need to be applied to every single base inside because these are products. If you need some revision on this, you can go and have a look at video 3 again. So, in A, we will have 9 squared, which is 81, and x to the power of 6 squared, which is 6 times 2, and that is 12. In B, we start off with 2 cubed, which will give us 8, and then x to the power of 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3, and that is x to the power of 9. In example 2, we are going to have a look at square roots and cube roots. In example A, we need to calculate the square root of 9x to the power of 6. This means we need to break this up into two identical factors. We need to determine what times by itself will give 9x to the power of 6. So, this will be broken up into 3x to the power of 3 times 3x to the power of 3. Because remember, when we multiply this out again, we will take the exponents of 3 plus 3 to get back to x to the power of 6. This can now be rewritten as 3x to the power of 3 squared. So this can be simplified to 3x to the power of 3. Instead of going through the trouble of breaking the value up into two identical factors, you can simply remember that the exponent has to be divided by 2. And this is because I want to form two identical factors. So I'm going to make the conclusion that when I want to determine the square root of a variable, I can simply take the exponent of the variable and divide it by 2. So in B, we can immediately start off by determining the square root of 100, which is 10. And for the variable of x to the power of 4, I'm going to divide the exponent by 2 to get 2. And the same goes for the y. To get the square root, I'm going to divide the exponent by 2. In C, we now need to determine the cube root. For the constant value of 27, we already know that the cube root is 3. For the variables, I'm going to use a note similar to the one we had for square roots and say that when determining the cube root of a variable, I can simply take the exponent of that variable and divide by 3 because in reality I'm forming three identical factors. So back to our example, here we will take the exponent of 27 and divide it by 3 to get x to the power of 9. In example 3, we're going to have a look at what happens if there's more than one term. In A, we have a bracket with two terms inside that need to be squared. Here you need to realize that the two terms are like terms because they have the same variables and therefore they can be added up. When we add these two terms up, we will get 8x squared to the power of 2. And when squared, this will give us a final answer of 64x to the power of 4. In B, we have two terms inside a square root, and this works similar. We have two like terms, and therefore we can add them up. When we add them up, we will get 25x to the power of 8. And now we can determine the square root. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of x to the power of 8 is x to the power of 4. Because we divide the exponent by 2. In both these examples, it is very important to remember to first add up before you can determine the square or the square root. Let's say, for example, B, I decided to determine the square root of each term separately first. Then, for my first term, I would have had a square root of 4x to the power of 4. And for my second term, I would say 3x to the power of 4. When added up, 
This will give me 7 x to the power of 4. This is definitely not correct, so it is important to remember that the square root acts as a bracket around everything on the inside and that has to be done first. In example C, I'm again going to simplify on the inside first by multiplying. 4 times 9 is 36 and for the variable I'm going to add up the exponents to get 16. Determining the square root will then be the square root of 36 which is 6 and for the square root of the variable you need to remember to divide the exponent by 2 and here we will then get 8. Note the difference between example B and C. In C we have multiplication which is one term. This means you are allowed to first do the square root of 4x to the power of 10 and that is 2x to the power of 5 and then multiply it with the square root of 9x to the power of 6 which is 3x to the power of 3. If I multiply this I will also get 6 x to the power of 8. So when everything is already one term, that means multiplied or divided, the order of calculation doesn't matter. In B we had more than one term because we had a plus and that is why we had to simplify the inside first. In D we now have to divide inside the cube root. When dividing I will end with 8 x to the power of 6. Now I can determine the cube root of 8 which is 2 and the cube root of x to the power of 6 is determined by dividing the exponent by 3 so that is x to the power of 2.